One of the important aspects of being able to manage and oversee the software testing process or manage the test work in any way is to collect metrics and other information of the software testing process and on the state of the product. The metrics and measurements are basically tools. They provide useful information which can be used to manage and steer the test process. This information can be something simple like the amount of money used versus the amount of product features which are functioning or the amount of time left and compared to the amount of money left. It can also be something from the uh, technical aspects of the product something like the amount of test cases which fail or the amount of use cases which remain unimplemented or the amount of system code which is currently not covered by the existing use case uh, database. In any way, the metrics and measurements should provide the necessary information used to assess the current state of the software product the, uh, to be able to have an insight into what sort of state the software product will be in the future and allow the management to have an idea on where the project in, all, in general is going. In all these metrics and measurements, the idea is that the measurement is repeatable, precise, comparable and economical. It means that the metric shouldn't obviously be based on random numbers. If we make the same measurement at, with the same inst instrument at the same time, it should provide us a result which is always the same. Also, it should be precise enough that we have a valid scale and we know why the metric comes up to that solution. Also, we should be able to change the source of information and be able to compare the measurements or the data from the different measurements against each other. Finally, the metric should be economical. It should be affordable to collect and analyze the data and it should be simple enough to collect and automated enough to apply that it should not cause significant costs or management overhead to be collected and used. Therefore, if the measure, measurement or metric fulfills all these four requirements, it's something that can be used to manage the software test process or be used as an indicator of the state of the current software product. For example, in ISO IEC 29119 there's uh, six different main categories for testing related metrics. This uh, information uh, defines over 80 different metrics and measurements which could be useful in a project depending on what we are doing and what the project scale is. It's obvious that if we are having a two or three person project it's not really feasible to assess the amount of working hours of different people or how many uh, task hours they have against their working hours because we have only three people so we don't have to be worried about the efficient use of different uh, developers. On the other hand if we are using a large group or we are doing a huge software product it would be interesting or important to ensure that all our modules are tested thoroughly although there's some problems with the 100% test coverage but that's not the important part here. Uh, anyway, the different metric uh, metric classes or classifications are metrics that aid planning, metrics for monitoring progress in general, metrics concerning coverage, metrics for test results, metrics related to confidence and measure measurements for test effectiveness and efficiency.
The last one, the test effectiveness and efficiency, is about the coverage and the uh, amount of uh, test cases against the uh, amount of found errors or the percentage of found errors based on fault seeding information or the test case coverage. The metrics to aid planning include things like number of risks, uh, the size of the product, the code complexity, uh, size of the st test specification to be created or the uh, size of the test data to be produced or in something like number of tasks, how many cases we need to cover all the functionalities, how many are still left undefined and so on and so on. The metrics for monitoring the progress are things like number of tasks which are done, number of tasks which are underway, or the elapsed time or working hours or expenditures or something else which is tangible to measure and easy to define if the product is 40% complete and we have used over 70% of our budget then we know that something is problematic in the project. The metrics concerning coverage uh, include things like the how, what things we have in our test cases. Do we have boundary values, the business processes, or do all the identified risks have cases or test suits for them? Do we have all the different sequences of transitions? Do we cover all the conditions? And so on and so on. The test results are, well, the simplest ones, number of past test procedures, number of failed, number of past re regression tests, number of closed incidents number against number of reported incidents and these sort of things. So overall the data which is easily found, for example, from the incident reporting database or bug management da database and which can be easily used to for example, tell that how many critical errors we still have in our product. The metrics related to confidence are something like failures per time unit or number of incomplete downloads or number, number of orphaned files. It means that how up-to-date the system is, how fragile the environment is and or how stable the current system is. So, overall, that measurement tells us the technical robustness information. Finally, like I said earlier, the measurements for test effectiveness and efficiency tell about the defect detection percentage, for example, from mutation testing and also, so, also possibly return, return of testing investment, for example, how much money the test ha testing work has already saved for the project, considering that the uh, bugs would have been found later in the development cycle or after launch. Finally, there's a couple of things to consider before going hog wild with defining metrics which could be useful for the management team. Of course, there are several different ways to collect information. For example, the bug databases and uh, incident reports, which were already mentioned, or the budget or schedule, which are usually something that exists in, in all types of projects. But, like I said earlier, it is vital that the information is A, actually useful, and B, easy to collect. Because metrics which are difficult to produce are wasteful to use simply because it, there are easier ways to collect metrics and the information available. And for, and for example, what's the broad or uh, generated value of using a metric which is difficult to have or obtain or observe from the project information? Also, if there's metrics which are not used, for example, some information which is systematically bypassed or not actually used in the test management, then why are we still collecting it? We know from the documentation that if there's documents which are irrelevant for the work or difficult to use, they are dropped out when we run out of time to 
so to say, play the documentation game. Similarly, metrics which are not useful, they are just waste of time to collect if there's no use for them. We should focus on the information which is actually useful. And even if the information is useful, we should prefer metrics which can be collected automatically, for example from databases, or semi-automatically, for example, by collecting information from the databases and then doing the calculations manually or collecting manually information about, for example, how many open tasks different developers currently have and or how many different open tasks each developer closed during the last week of development. So, as a closing remark, I'd like to remind that the metrics and measurements are useful to identify the upcoming problems, to mitigate the risks and ensure that the project and the development work can be managed and steered towards better result. However, if the metric or measurement applied is not repeatable, precise, comparable or economical, it should be scrapped and something more useful should be used on its, uh, as its replacement.